Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. The research has shown that static stretching can actually desensitize the nervous system. Therefore, you can lose feel, because golf is all about feel and tempo, right? Well, so, it's also a fast motion. It is. So, therefore, you know, I'm really big on doing flexibility and, and range of motion exercises. Say you lay on your side with your knees to your chest hands together and I call it the open book and you take your top hand and you turn your upper torso keeping your knees on the ground and just stretching back and closing it open and closing that book four or five to ten times that's more of a rotational kind of a functional movement because you'll be rotating back and forth back and forth in the golf swing therefore that will kind of get the spine and the body loosened up and more in a functional matter so I try to loosen up the body more in the, in the golf swing pattern if that makes sense to you guys trying to keep the body and the body warmed up in a functional golf matter. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. One of the areas of golf that I like to emphasize is fitness and flexibility. To me, it's the easiest way to increase your strength, stamina, and distance off the tee. There are also a ton of great instructors who are really interesting and can provide us with amazing bits of information that really and truly help. But let's get something straight. I'm not an exercise freak. Actually, just this morning, my wife asked me if I've gotten any aerobic exercise lately. Uh, no. I, now, I, I do take a core strengthening class twice each week when I can, but it's not aerobic. And was mostly for relieving back pain, which I must say is pretty much gone. And that I've lost 20 pounds by tightening up the gut. But aerobics to me is walking the golf course and walking the dog. To be honest, the length of my morning walks with the dog are based on which podcast I'm listening to that day. So, no, I don't exercise a ton, but I do believe in it. Anyway, our guest today is Corey Taylor, who could pound most of us into the ground with his fitness workouts, but he loves golf and wants to help. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Corey. Fred, how you doing? I'm doing fine, man. Everything going well? Hey, couldn't complain. I'm not no complaints this way. Oh, come on, you. Everybody has some complaints somewhere. It wouldn't do me any good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Not complaining to me, it wouldn't. <laughs> um, you you've got an interesting path that you've made to golf. You uh, didn't start out as a golfer. Your your first love, your first passion. My assumption is that you weren't a golfer. You played football in college, probably in high school, and most of your childhood. Absolutely. Yeah, football was, uh, football, from football to uh, golf fitness training. So uh, yeah, my story is a little unique. Uh, Share it with us, please. Well, as far as football, I, I, play, I played, obviously I played uh, high school ball in, in, in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, uh, at a powerhouse high school, Trinity High School, and then went on and uh, played collegiate football. Uh, started off at UConn, and I finished up at a school called Georgetown College, which is a smaller NEI school. And then I uh, made my journey as a journeyman uh, through the pro football ranks and then and tried to make it until I started breaking down like a, like a horse, like a thoroughbred at the Derby. And, uh, you know, grew up in Louisville, huh? Yeah, I grew up in Louisville. So. <laughs> yeah, you talk about, it, about Derby horses. <laughs> so, you know, 12 surgeries later, you know, oh. it was time for me to hang up the cleats and, and, and uh, move to my second love. Did, and, oh, so golf is your second love? I love golf. I, it is. When did you start playing? Started playing back in let's see, ninety seven. My wife actually uh, played in college. Oh. Actually, her family is the first family of golf in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, so, what does that mean? Her family. I mean, her, I mean her, her. Two of her uncles are pros here. One is a, a trick shot artist who travels around the world doing shows. Um, let's see. Her one of her uncles played the British Open. Um, good friends with Gary Player. Uh, all of her cousins have played in high school or played in college uh, at the collegiate level. So, um, so why am I talking to you? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you know uh, Amy could probably uh, t- 
tell you a whole lot. But as far I, as the, I want to know about the trick shot artist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you got some interesting things there. See, it's a spinoff of me. Yeah, right. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, you know, the Globetrotters doing trick shots on basketball, but a trick shot artist in golf would be really entertaining. How do you do that consistently? I mean, and and he puts it in the cup. Oh, uh, what he does, he goes to the range and he has different. Uh, different clubs, like he might have one that's a, it's a hose nozzle, like a, a hose that we use, you know, the, for, and then it has a, uh, you know, a club head at the end, and he does hit and hits different shots. One's a bat, and one's a real long club. I mean, he does all different, one's a rope that turns, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all these different clubs, and it's just amazing. I mean, I, it sounds that way, but it's like, like at golf? <laughs> hey. And if, 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 golfers are crazy. We we love being crazy about the sport. Any way, any story that we can find. But let's get back to fitness. Let's talk about you. So you uh, you, you started playing golf. You fell in love with the sport. Um, it, but it's a radically different sport than football. Where do you find the similarities? Well, the similarities for me, as far as the concentration, um, obviously the preparation. Um, um, for the similarities, you got to have good balance. You got to be. Uh, I think, uh, as you look at the younger players that are coming up these days, they're not just golfers; they're athletes, hmm. and they're able. You must love that. And I do. And 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 I'm talking about tour players. And uh, you know, you look at the Dustin Johnsons, the Roy McIlroys, the younger guys, the Camilo Vijayas. Those guys coming up right now. Um, Anthony Kim can't leave AK out. Those guys are good athletes. They can play other sports as well. And, and be and, and be very successful at those. Um, maybe not the collegiate, not, maybe not at the professional level, but they're good athletes. So uh, it, 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 the game has evolved. Where you know, you know, it takes a little athleticism, which I can relate to. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting that you said that um, the concentration is a similarity that you see. Um, to me, football is uh, other than being a quarterback, I guess, but it's all reaction. Well, not, not, or where, where does the concentration? I would think discipline would be the word that I didn't hear from you. Well, I think, I think absolutely discipline, uh, it falls in there at the top. Um, but I think concentration and be able to concentrate and, and not lose focus, should I say. Uh, also, know, always know your assignment. Always know where you're supposed to be because it is quick reaction. Not to think. You've got to have total focus and, and, focus and concentration to, to react in a split second or you could not get up off the ground. Mm-hmm. For a long time, very long time. Or yeah. you have to be, need a lot of assistance. And at what point did you decide that uh, you you also wanted to get into the fitness aspect? Well, when I I blew my Achilles, oh, back in '03. Oh my first, dear, my first Achilles rupture. Actually, I was uh, I had an opportunity to come to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I was gonna going to have a good workout with the Packers because they were looking for another back. Nice. And I blew my Achilles prior to. Too, going up there, oh, so, so sorry. I moved the Green the are, at the time. Green Bay had started an arena football team called the Green Bay Blizzard, and my, it was a brand new franchise. And they had a link to the Packers, and the and the uh, the player personnel director was with, with, with the Packers said, "Hey, if Corey can come rehab up here, show that he's healthy, play some games the Blizzard, we'll bring him back in, re- work him out before uh, training camp, and, and bring him in if everything goes well." Well, to make a long story short. Uh, my doctor who did my surgery missed an attachment at my at my Achilles. So for six months I rehabbed, and my Achilles wasn't attached all the way. So to make a long story short, um, I had to have another surgery. I never got my shot playing in, the, you know, getting with the pack, and I never even played in the, you know, I never played at all that year. And I had to have another surgery, and the doctor's like, I can't can't guarantee you, Corey, this is going to work. Uh, but I'm going to try to reattach the Achilles and, and see if we can get some function back in that in, in that ankle. And uh, the surgery worked well. But at the time, my therapist um, not only uh, was in sports performance, but also he owned the Hole in One Golf Program and ran that. He was a direct, he was the manager of sports medicine uh, at the Aurora Bay Care Medical Center. His name is Todd Bruss. Todd rehabbed me to get me back on the playing field, but also introduced me to golf fitness. So at the time. I learned under him. He rehabbed me. Uh, we became good friends, and then I, w- I went back to the playing field uh, to try to try to make a comeback and play at a couple different levels. And uh, this never was the same after that. And then mm. uh, after a while, you know, that's how I, I, I kind of gravitated towards the golf fitness side.
Let's talk about golf fitness and and how you see the benefits of being a, a professional football player, a, you know, a dedicated football player for so many years, and and the correlation between the two um, on what elements of your football fitness you were able to bring in and find benefit in your golf fitness. Well, as far as training, or if we're talking about um, tour level guys that I, I, I that I that I work with as well, I do have a lot of local clients, but I also am on a PJ tour. I have players out on the tour, and a bit of work with them. You, have, think, you have players on the tour. You're saying yes. Do you, yes. Can you drop names for us? Oh, uh, I mean, um, I can talk about players that I've worked with. I mean, I'm, I'm a Kenny okay. Perry's trainer okay. right now. Uh, I've worked with JB Holmes, and I've worked with Mark Hensby. I got a chance to work a little bit with Anthony Kim. Uh, I've been very lucky to, pl- to work with some of the top players in the world. So um, I have had opportunity to work with a lot of top players. Yeah. And um, and also I have one 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 uh, one player in the LPJ tour, Leah Wigger, who's a rookie this year, has full exemption out there, and I'll be traveling about five weeks with her this year. Okay. So let's talk about now. We're talking about the benefits of of, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about tour players because sure. that's not who we're talking to. Sure. It's not who I am. It's okay. not who our listeners are. <laughs> you know, what's in it for us is what well, we want to know. Well, as far as the correlation. I, I think the correlation for me, uh, from what I see, is is that is 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 the balance aspect. Having to get, have to have good balance, uh, have to have good flexibility, um, uh, have to. There we go back to the, you know the focus and the concentration to keep your head down and not come out of come out of your shot <laughs> that a lot of us do, and, you know, and, and push that ball to the right or what have you. So as far as the body and the correlation there, I think there's some similarities as far as just, you know, having a good feel for your body, you know, to make sure that for your right-handed golfer that you're getting to that left side and you're not hanging back and flipping the club and trying to get some speed, but you're actually you're losing power. So uh, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of correlation that I see there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And you probably, because of what part of the country you're in, you are probably work with a lot of people who have to take months off at a time. Right, you know, I I am in the South in Louisville, Kentucky, but we're the the top of the South. Yeah, so I mean, far, come on, I've been to Louisville, and you're about as far. I mean, that's. I know they consider it the South, they, they, but you, you're really there's other other cities that consider themselves northern cities that are farther south than you are. I don't know. I, hey, people here in, in Louisville, beg to, in Kentucky, would beg to differ if you said that it, when we were a northern or a midwestern city but uh you know call it what you want we don't get the best weather you know between uh you know november through through february and uh, i do deal with a lot of clients who do take some time off uh and, and don't get to play it's very sporadic they might get once a month in it we might get a you know a 50 degree day so everybody everybody heads to the golf course and tries to play so um it it, it is truly challenging in my area yeah yeah, absolutely. I, I know that it's interesting because this year, um, I, going uh, coming out of the golf season, I was having some elbow issues, mm-hmm. and I decided, even though I live in California, I've been communicating with so many people who are in uh, places of the country where they can't play, and they do take the off season um, and not play and are very frustrated by it. I thought, okay, let me use that as an excuse to stop playing for a while and see if I can get my he- my elbow to heal. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I am very happy to report my, my elbow is in great shape now, and I'm very excited about getting out to play again, although um, I'm nervous about it. <laughs> you know, I've not played in such a long time. It's, I better not have any expectations at all. Sure. Um, but the idea of staying in shape in the offseason, staying focused in the offseason, trying to get back in, um, is probably a very difficult thing to do year in and year out and still maintain your, your love and passion for the sport. How do you keep people you know, focused on what the goal is, is to keep their flexibility and strength and core strength ready for golf? Well, I think that if people understand what golf fitness does for their body, you know, everybody wants to hit it further than their friend. Everybody wants to hit it past their friend. They hit it better so they want to go buy new equipment or the, or the newest thing that's on the market. But if you can really invest in your body, and, you know, and I really educate people, if you can invest in your body and not spend five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred dollars on some clubs, it, it would last a lot longer than those set of clubs that you try to purchase to buy a game. So you know, I, I try to explain to them from that standpoint. And once they understand that, oh, well, I'm doing this in my golf swing and I'm doing that, yeah, you can try to buy it, buy some clubs to fix that. But let me see, let me show you what's really going on in your body physically, biomechanically. And let's fix this 
to help this in your golf swing. Okay, for instance, your elbow. Your elbow could be a result to lack of external rotation in your shoulder. Okay, so I would fit, work on getting you more range of motion in your shoulder because probably when you're trying to come down to impact, you're probably trying to generate a little bit more power, but you're not getting enough rotation in your shoulder when taking the club back. So, so all that power is really generating down to your elbow as you're snapping down trying to impact. So I'm going to take you and say, hey, we can get rid of that, sh- get rid of that elbow pain if we work on more flexibility in your shoulder and get more range of motion. Hmm. So get there, and you're, t- and you're going out to the range, and you're hitting balls, and you're not feeling that anymore. Like, huh, okay. Good. So, so it's about educating people about how the body really is affected in the golf game. And it's not just high-level players, but the everyday dew sweeper, the everyday amateur who's out there playing can really really lower their handicap, enjoy the game even, even more. If they just take time to work on flexibility, work, work on balance and stability, and, and therefore it makes the game more fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just I, I want to correct you on one thing, and I, I don't mean to correct you, but when you said everybody wants to hit it farther than their buddies, that may be true, but don't we really want to hit it less times than our buddies? Yeah, well, if you hit it farther, <laughs> then you don't have Yeah, you want to hit less time. We want to hit, well, I want to take fewer strokes. I don't care if he goes 10 yards past me. I just want to take fewer <laughs> strokes. Well, I'll guarantee you, I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I get a lot of players who want to hit it further than their friends. <laughs> or they want to keep up with them. All right, or they want to hit it as far as their sons. Their, their sons hit it past now, so can you help me hit it further? <laughs> so so, I, so you, you correct me if you want, but that's what a lot of people come to me yeah, for. right. I'll tell you, once my kids started beating me at basketball, I didn't play with them anymore. Right. <laughs> I said, all right, I'm done. I don't want to play with you anymore. It's like, well, well, are we going to play basketball? No, not if you're going to beat me. That's right. not fun for me anymore. It was great when I could beat you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you are a TPI certified uh, instructor, mm-hmm. and we have had various uh, people on before who are TPI certified. What does that offer you, somebody who's had such vast training in uh, athletics and sports? Why would you uh, find value in being TPI certified? Well, that's credibility as well. Okay. You know, because people look at me as a football guy. Mm. Like, well, what do you know about golf? Well, when I can break down the golf swing and break down the biomechanics of the golf swing and how the body works and the functionality of the golf swing, then they're like, oh, okay, you do know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I do. So this gives, kind of, this, this validates me as in my profession. But also being, you know, being you know, an ex, ex-professional athlete, I understand the body. I understand how my body really works. And I understand, you know, I, I've, been, I've, I've trained under different strength coaches and performance coaches from the sports performance side. So I just took a lot of that knowledge and, and, and that I've gained. And also working in sport. I mean, I also worked, I worked at the Institute for Sports Science and Medicine in Salt Lake City. I worked there uh, and, and trained under some of the top exercise physiologists uh, when I was rehabbing my knee, when I blew my knee out in 01. So I moved to Salt Lake City and worked at the Institute. And I trained some of the, the top Olympic athletes there. I worked with some top collegiate athletes there. I got vast firsthand knowledge and experience working with high-level athletes at one of the top you know, training centers you know, in the nation. So I took that experience along with my TPI certification. Hey, I got, I, I got, I'm pretty well-rounded. So, you know, and th- that's why I, I know I just thought the TPI side would help me understand a lot, a lot better about the body and the golf swing. Yeah, very good. Very good. So TPI is really, uh, if you're a TPI certified instructor, um, as far as your fitness is concerned, it really adds not only, as you said, credibility, but it's something for the average golfer to be looking for if they're looking for a fitness trainer for golf. Absolutely. I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people out who say they train golfers, and they may try to find a niche. But until you pass those certification levels with TPI as an offer, I don't think you really have, a, have, have the knowledge, the understanding of how the body really works and what you're looking for as far as hmm. uh, Limitations in the body, yeah. functional limitations. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you have a hard time because you got to understand one functional limitations in the body, and one the biomechanics and how the body works in the golf swing. It's a lot to learn. I got to share a story with you. So this morning I was at a meeting at at, uh, uh, at the the restaurant that's associated with our our uh, you know little nine hole golf course and they have a driving range there and i was distracted by watching somebody who is getting over to the driving range to just get started and i watched them stretch before um their uh before they started hitting balls uh-huh. 
And I was fascinated, and I, I was so glad that I, I was watching it because I knew you and I were going to talk today. So here's the routine that I watch this guy do. First thing, and, and tell me, I mean, is this the right approach, or does this, you know, kind of, you find this amusing? Um, so first thing he did, right arm, swinging around in big circles. Right, and I'm doing this right now. Then the left arm, swinging around in big circles, you know, up and, you know, from top to bottom, top to bottom, yeah. big circles, fast, fast swings. Uh, did that for four or five times, left arm, big, big swing, four or five times. Okay, now he's loosening his arms. Then he takes a golf club and he turns left and he turns right and he bounces left and he goes right, you know, and he's rotating on his, with his, you know, his feet. We're shoulder width apart, and he's just, you know, keeping his feet still, but his upper body is rotating back and forth. But you can see he's pumping and pumping. He's not holding any position. He's just rotating quickly back and forth. Then he takes that golf club, and he bends over to the right at the hip, and he bends over to the left. I don't see him doing any lower body movement at all. He's, his lower body is still the whole time. He's just doing upper body stuff, and he's doing it quickly. He's not holding any position. He's not breathing through any position, which d- my tendency would be to do that. Nor did I, And then, then he takes two clubs in one hand, and he starts the rotation, the big arm rotation, and in the back and forth, swing it like a baseball bat with one arm. Then he takes his left arm, and he does that too. Um, Nice. <laughs> so yeah. tell me, how would you approach this guy? What would you tell him to do? <laughs> or, or is is he is he was he on the right track? Well, did you watch his golf swing? No, I had okay. to get back to my meeting. I was like, uh, well, it's like well, I, I like to see his golf swing after that. If he was knocking him stiff, then I'd be like, hey, you know, if that works for you, buddy, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know. Uh, uh, obviously, you know my belief in, in 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 the fitness industry and golf fitness is that to generate more stability uh, and, and 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 power, um, the lower body has to be has to really be functional. Uh, I'm really big on working on lower body stability, balance, and strength. Uh, therefore, you have a l- nice stable base you can rotate around and fire through mm-hmm. the other side. So, therefore, um, <laughs> kind of get, taking a, getting a visualization of what what this guy was doing out on the range. Uh, I probably wouldn't have him do some of those stretches. Okay. Uh, I probably uh, we'd probably do uh, what I'm what I call functional stretches. I'm not big on static stretching. What I mean, I'm not big on this holding a position because what what uh, uh, you know findings and research has shown that static stretching can actually desens- desensitize the nervous system. Therefore, you can lose feel because golf swing is all about feel and tempo, right? Well, so, it's also a fast motion. It is. So therefore, um, they, you know, I'm really big on doing uh, uh, flexibility and, and range of motion exercises. Uh, uh, say you lay on your side um, with your knees to your chest, um, hands together, and it's, I call this the open book. And you take your your top hand and you turn your upper torso, keeping your knees on the ground, and just stretching back and, and closing it, opening and closing that book four or five to ten times. That's more of a rotational kind of a, a functional movement because you'll be rotating back and forth, back and forth in the golf swings. So therefore, that will kind of get the spine uh, and the body loosened up in more in a functional matter. So I tried to loosen up the body more in the, in the golf swing pattern. Does that make, if that makes sense to, mm-hmm. to you guys? Um, just trying to um, keep the body and in, in the, in the body warmed up in, in a functional golf matter. Interesting. Um, you know, I, I can imagine for somebody playing baseball or even basketball or football, when you go from a standing position to a full sprint in a matter of two or three steps, um, that, you know, your, your, your hamstrings and, and, you know, ankles, things like that have to be stretched out fully before you do that. I mean, how many, how many softball players do you see blow out a hamstring because running from home to first base, they just take off and they're not loose at all, right? Yeah. So, uh, but that's not necessarily golf, right? I mean, what what are the parts of the body that really require to stretch out and warm up before a round of golf? What should we be concentrating on? Should it be, you know, like this guy's doing his upper body and he's doing his shoulders, but he's not doing anything to for his lower back? I mean, he's not, say, bringing his knees up or anything sure. to, to stretch out his his. Um, not his hamstring. Yeah, his hamstrings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hamstrings are very important to, to, to stretch out. Your quads are very important to stretch out. Uh, low back and glutes. The glutes are the major power source for the for the for the golf swing. So therefore, if you're not 
warming your your glutes up and getting your, your you know stretching your lower extremities and getting them ready for you know uh, a big load and then also a nice you know swing through. Then therefore, um, you know you, you you're setting yourself up for failure. And and the one thing I like to I like to you know do when I have clients come and see me is really kind of want to isolate one side versus the other. What I mean by that is isolate right leg versus left leg. I want to see if you have any muscle imbalances. Are your quads overpowering your hamstring? I mean, for vice versa, because that can really that can really um, cause some problems in stability and balance. You know, as far as coming out of your golf shot hmm. or, or starting your sequence or coming over the top. You know, which a lot of us do. I mean, have that nice good slice coming, and uh, so um, I think the lower body is something that you really got to focus on. And I think a lot of a lot of players um, they don't they don't understand that that the lower body is is king. Absolutely. Absolutely. So give us, if you will, um, what you would advise one of your clients to be their warm-up uh, before they go and hit the bucket of balls before their round of golf. And they've got a uh, you know, half hour to tee time or maybe 35 minutes to tee time. So they've got to stretch out a little bit. What would be the um, routine that you would advise them to take to make sure that they, they loosen up the proper parts of their body so they'll be ready for a round of golf? Well, absolutely. When we talked about the lower body, um, I think you, I, I let you go ahead and I want to get you a good, uh, I'll get you down touch your toes, a nice hip hinge, not a rounded back, a nice flat back, kind of, you know, a good hip hinge, go down as far as you can, get a good, nice little stretch. Um, then from there, I like to, you know, I would take a club, uh, stretch my shoulders out, um, hold on, hold your arm up at 90 degrees, take a club, and kind of uh, reach underneath and kind of give a nice stretch, get your shoulders stretched back a little bit, kind of like the position you would have if you took the club back, kind of get a good stretch in that rotator cuff, a good external rotation in the shoulder um, from there. And then, you know, um, we like, obviously have to warm up the spine with some rotations, uh, nice, smooth, not, not quick, herky-jerky, you know, fast pumping motion, but a nice, smooth motion uh, to kind of get the body nice warmed up, obviously, to, you know, uh, from there. So I, and also, you know, I really what I do. Um, a lot of sing, have my clients do a lot of single leg turns. What I mean by that is, have you stand on get, get near like a five iron setup, take one leg away. Uh, now you're balanced on one leg. Okay, yeah. when you say take one leg away, put it behind you. Yeah, kind of bend it like a ninety degrees. Right, kind of behind you. You bend it, bend it behind you. I'm doing that right now while, while we speak. Okay, yeah. and then while you're in your setup, cross your arms, like cross, cross your arms, cross your chest, oh. and then turn your shoulder to the leg that you're standing on, and back to neutral. Turn, back to neutral. Therefore, that's, that stimulates the body to activate, stabilize, and you're working on that's good. rotation at the same time. That's good. I like that's it. Neat. And then I have you switch legs. And so wait, when I'm rotating, so when I'm, I'm standing up on one foot, uh-huh. and I'm holding my arms across my chest, uh-huh. and I rotate to the, to the foot that uh, I'm standing on, that you're standing and on. then come back to center, and then I rotate again back to that foot, or I go to the opposite direction back as well? Back to that foot. Okay, I keep going to the foot that I'm standing right. on. Right. Okay, okay. Good. You do that about 10 to 15 times, and then you know, in, in, in switch, that'll really get your, get your legs really fine, because you've got to stabilize. Uh, you really get you know work on your your upper torso. You know it might be a little tight, but after a couple times rotating, you start to loosen up a little bit. So that's more functional. That's something that I like to get, get my clients doing. You know something that's gonna, they're actually going to be doing. You know, so we we got both sides of the body warmed up. Well, I also see that being um, a a great way to contribute to your balance, and balance is so critical in a golf swing. Oh, it's it's huge. You know, I I have a lot of clients that come in and I, I give them a. I give them a single leg balance test, and what I do is I have them come and, 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 and a lot of and I have them come in, stand on one leg, and see how long they can stand on one leg with their eyes closed. Uh, I mean, an average tour player can go to thirty seconds with their eyes closed one leg, but I, I bet you, uh, but I have ninety percent of my, my my clients they fall over after like three to five seconds. Oh sure, and then you have the sea, the uh, highway patrol show up and <laughs> arrest them. <laughs> So they're, yeah, right, you know, take them through a test. But, you know, that's something that a lot of, a lot of my clients are like, man, I thought I had good balance. But no, you really don't. But when we start working on those things in the facility, we start working on your balance and your stability, and then they come back like, man, I, I really feel a lot, a really solid in my golf swing. I really feel like I got a nice strong base, and I can just rotate around, and bam, you know, they can hit that, hit that ball the way they, they've always 
you know, dreamed of or thought about they could really hit it or used to be able to hit it, but they couldn't, but they can't, you know, get that pop on the ball anymore. So, you know, that's, that's something that, uh, you know, it's really un- underestimated is, is the balance in the golf swing. Awesome. So your website is uh, golffitnessacademyky.com, correct? Yes, yes. Golffitnessacademykentucky.com. Uh-huh. And I'm also on putt.com as right. a golf fitness expert. I have videos on that website. Um, I'll even write a blog. I haven't updated it in a week, but I'm going to get back on there. <laughs> and so, um, but, uh, hey, if you do your blog once a week, you're doing okay. <laughs> so i got a blog on there. And, and I just talk about my life. Uh, as a golf fitness instructor and a golf fitness expert, I you know on um, road on, on on the road or at home, or I even talk about my son CJ, who's 18 months, and how you know what she's doing. So I kind of talk about a little bit of everything. But uh, um, on that website, you can ask any questions that you have or any kind of uh, questions that help with your fitness or. In, you know, and just watch the videos, and hopefully they'll be able to help you. Well, and if you have any questions for Corey, of course, you can write to me by going to golfsmarter.com and click on the Hey Fred button, and I can make sure Corey gets your question. And if you're in the uh, Louisville, Kentucky era, area, please go check him out. Stop yeah. by and see me, you know. I, Say hello. I'm, Tell him you heard him on Golf Smarter. Yeah, and we go play a round of golf together or something. There's the offer. There's the offer. It's out there. All right. Corey, thanks so much for your time, buddy. Best of luck to you. Hey, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Okay. I remember, everybody, the most important piece of equipment is your body. Take care of it. <laughs>